Hello, everyone, and welcome to a bonus episode of the Nordcast. I am your host, Nordic97, and just Nordic97 here. So the crew could not get together for an episode this past week. Unfortunately, we had plenty of things going on. The schedule didn't go well for us. And ironically, it is the week of the Stanley Cup Finals that we are doing this that we obviously couldn't record on. So I figured I'd come on here and make a bonus episode and talk about the Stanley Cup Finals and give that a little bit of a preview because we kind of can't just skip an episode for a week and let that go unnoticed. That's just that doesn't work. So we'll get straight into it here. I got some stats for you guys and things I want to bring up. But regardless, when you look at standings, these are two teams that were pretty high when they ranked in the standings, Florida being 52, 24, and 6 for 110 points. They would they won their Atlantic division. The Oilers were 49, 27, and 6 for 104 points. They were second in their division, just a couple of points behind the Vancouver Canucks. So when you look in terms of the last times these teams won Stanley Cups, Oilers 1990. That was 34 years ago. So if they win, they will break a pretty decently long drought, and that's that's good for the NHL. I think it's good to see that we're seeing teams that haven't won in a while or teams that have never won win the Stanley Cup. Speaking of which, never won. The Florida Panthers have never won a cup in their history, and they're back for the second straight Stanley Cup final trying to prove that wrong. So in terms of teams they beat, they beat the Lightning in five, the Bruins in six, and the Rangers in six to move on to the finals. So Florida, their path wasn't easy, but it definitely was it definitely was uh in their favor a lot throughout a lot of these series. They were up three one in game they were up three nothing in get in, in round one, were up three one in game in round two, and then they were up three two in game three in game uh in, in round three I, I don't know why i'm saying game three um but you know they have they i don't think they've ever l- been losing in this series besides i think in round three when the rangers went up 2-1 that's the only time though they've never faced elimination they've never been you know they've they've definitely overcome some adversity but they've never been in a position where they need to stave off elimination the oilers have on the other hand uh, they beat the Kings in five, beat the Canucks in seven, and they beat the Dallas Stars in six games to move on to the Stanley Cup Finals. So, L.A., easy game. They steamrolled the Kings. Vancouver, they were down 3-2. Things weren't looking too good, but then they came back, and they eventually won that series in seven. And Dallas, they were down 2-1, but that was the last time they would lose a game in that series. They went on to win in six games. So, again, these are two teams that have fought through a lot of adversity over the last couple of years. It's ironically two teams that when you look in the history of the 2010s, they weren't good. Like, I mean, a lot, like a, a lot of the time they wouldn't make the playoffs. Like I think Edmonton made the playoffs. I think only one year in the 2010s and that was 2016, 17. The Panthers, I think it was maybe one or two, maybe three, but still these are two teams that didn't really have a lot of success uh, in the early 2010s. And it's something that I mentioned too, in my, in my uh, YouTube final preview, I said that when I got into hockey, these two teams were terrible. Like, they were just not good whatsoever. But they built their teams up and up. Like, Florida obviously traded for Kachuk, for Hagee, Reinhardt, Bennett, Rodriguez. You know, they built their roster here. Edmonton did something similar, except they had had McDavid, Dreisaitl, and Nuge when I first got into it. They brought in Hyman. They brought in Kane. They drafted Holloway, brought in Henrique. They brought in Bouchard. You know, there's – it's a lot of years apart from them building up these two teams. That's how they come to be in this year's Stanley Cup final. It's a cool thing to look at too. And it makes me feel kind of old, to be honest. I know some of the people who are older are going to watch this video and be like, you're old. You're 17. How do you, why do you, why do do you think you're old? But regardless, so guys who have been really good in these series and in the playoffs so far, Matthew Kuchuk goes without saying, Um, you got Carter Verhage as well. Who's looked good. Um, Sam Reinhardt is amping up his contract even more. Anton Lindell looks really solid. When we talked about that in the Nordcast uh, 2020 redraft a couple episodes ago, uh, he was a guy that we said that is a very good playoff player, may not score you a lot of points, but is overall a really good playoff-ready player. Uh, Sam Bennett has been causing a lot of issues all playoffs. I think he's going to get in Edmonton's heads for sure. Uh, Evan Rodriguez, a versatile player, can play anywhere on the ice. Uh, Gustav Forsling as well has looked really good for the Panthers. Uh, great offensively, good defensively. Uh, same with Brandon Montour. Aaron Ekblad's looked good too. And then Oliver Ekman Larson as well has put up some points too. And then, of course, Sega Bobrovsky with a .908. He's looked good as well. I think that when you look in terms of 
you know, the overall top end talent and depth, I think Florida takes it. I think Florida has better depth, better offense. I don't think it's really close, to be honest with you. For the Oilers, you got Connor McDavid, obviously. McDavid and Dreisaitl will be obvious two names there. They've been uh, absolutely awesome in these playoffs. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, too, has looked great. Uh, Zach Hyman, as well, has looked has looked spectacular. Evander Kane's looked good. Dylan Holloway's put up some good goals here and there. Uh, same with Adam Henrique. And then guys like Evan Bouchard, who I think he needs like only like 10 points, and he's a butt, and he's like breaks the record for most points in a playoffs by a defenseman, which is absolutely insane to think from a guy like Evan Bouchard. Um, Matthias Eckholm as well has looked solid. Brett Kulak, good defensive defenseman. And then same with Cody CC too, who has, I think, two goals in game sevens this year, which I think is kind of funny. And then there's Stuart Skinner. There's a Stuart Skinner argument that um, has been brought up many times before. But, I mean, Skinner, he has a .897. It is the second worst, or it's actually tied for the worst day percentage by a goalie who's made the Cup Finals in the history it's since 2000. So that is uh, wild to think, wild to say. Um, but he's in the Stanley Cup Finals. And, I mean, his, his, his on-paper numbers don't don't speak for how good he is. I think he still is a really solid uh, goaltender. It's just a matter of, like, you know, like there's there's games where he has that are really good, games where he has that are really bad. And as well as that, too, I do feel like the Oilers will play good defensively and not allow a lot of shots. And I think the shots that they do allow, Skinner will let them in, which is kind of kind of ironic. So those are the two teams, top end talent and players who have been really good in this series. Again, I wouldn't mind seeing any team win this. This is one of those playoffs where I really don't care either way. Um, I I look at it, though. I got to say Panthers in seven. I think it goes to full seven, but I have the Florida Panthers winning it. I will say this, too. This has been the most split Stanley Cup final I've ever seen. Like There were a couple of finals in previous years where it was pretty lopsided who fans wanted to see win and who fans thought they were going to win. Um, but this year, it's very even. Like, I, I did a poll on my YouTube channel. I think it was like 50% Florida, 50% Oilers or something along those lines. Like, it is a really close, really kind of uncertain Stanley Cup final here. And we'll see. Uh, so let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Again, apologies for uh, the Norcast not being able to put up an episode. Actually, I do have their predictions here for you. Let me pull those up real quick. So in terms of predictions um, for who's going to win this series... Uh, I believe Carter has Panthers in seven, and Jack, I think, also has Panthers in seven, maybe Panthers in six. But above all, um, we're all going Panthers when you look at it. We're probably going to be wrong now that we're doing that. But regardless, um, I'm hoping to be able to cover this finals with you with you guys in the future. But regardless, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to like, subscribe down below. I really appreciate it. If you're listening on the podcast end of things, uh, give us a good review. Tell your friends and stay tuned for next week's episode. Uh, but yeah, we will see you guys next week with episode number 58. And uh, yeah, adios.